this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to make wooden screws and wooden nuts. In this um, particular part, I'm going to talk about the details behind dimensioning the screws you want. Um, I'll show you how to decide uh, what diameter of screw you want and how many uh, teeth per inch you want. In this tutorial, I'm going to be making a one inch diameter wooden screw with four teeth per inch. I'm going to be using these screws to make bar clamps and other clamps. Um, but of course the exact same procedures apply to any other size screw. All you have to do is change the dimensions. For the sake of simplifying the tutorial, I'm going to go over three tooth patterns. I'll go over four, two, and one and one third tooth per inch thread patterns. They're probably the only um, patterns you'll ever need to use anyways. You can't go any larger than this uh, unless you can get a rotor bit larger than most companies will sell. And going any smaller than this, you do not need this style of tap. You can simply get a threaded rod and file grooves into the end and use that as a, um, a tap. On this paper, I have drawn to four times the original scale the three patterns that I'm going to show you. At the top we have the four tooth, in the middle we have the two tooth, and at the bottom we have the one and one third tooth per inch thread patterns. So here you can see the dimensions between the uh, tips of the threads and in, as well as the dimensions from the tip to the valley of the threads. You can see with each pattern the dimensions multiply. So you can see here the dimension between the tips of the threads is a quarter. With the second pattern, it's half. And with the third, it's three quarters. And you can see as well with the dimensions from the top to the bottom of the thread, they go up by eighths from an eighth to a quarter to three eighths. So with these thread patterns, it makes for very easy um, dimensioning, very easy marking and layout. I would recommend using the two tooth per inch pattern for most woodworking vices like um, I have on my bench for shoulder vices, leg vices and things. The four tooth per inch would be better for smaller clamps, um, maybe bar clamps and things like that. And the larger one and one third tooth per inch pattern, you could also use that for uh, work benches or even larger presses like uh, maybe if you're making a cider press or something like that. If you're trying to decide whether to make two or one and one third tooth per inch patterns for um, your vices for your workbench or whatever, I would recommend the two tooth pattern only because it's easier to um, tap the nut out. With the larger one and one third tooth per inch pattern, it's gonna take a lot more time and strength to cut out the threads for the nut. So if um, you're on the wall trying to decide which pattern to use, I'd recommend the two. Um, unless you need the strength if you're making a very powerful press or something, the larger screws um, would probably be worth it. But for most woodworking, if you're making a bench, the two tooth per inch would be just fine. You could even use the four tooth per inch pattern as well. You also have to remember with the larger tooth patterns, the screw will move faster, but with the smaller thread patterns, your screw will have more torque. Though at the same time, the smaller screws have less strength than the larger. So you have to make a compromise sometimes. When deciding on the size of your screw's diameter, it depends upon what the application is. For most workbenches, usually the two and two and a half is a good size, though you could go a little smaller. For bar clamps and other clamps, um, closer to the one inch to one and a half inch diameter would be better. If you're making a large press, you could go up to three inches or larger. If you have decided to make a larger diameter screw, you have to keep in mind that you need a drill bit that can drill a hole that large. If you are doing a very large size hole and you cannot find a drill bit that size, you'll need to use a circle cutter or um, something like that to make a template for a router so you can route out the hole. So if you have decided to make a two inch 
diameter wooden screw and you have decided to do a two tooth per inch thread pattern to get the inside diameter take the outer number here one quarter multiply that by two which would be one half of an inch and then take that and subtract it from the outer diameter of your screw which is two inches so that you have an inside diameter of one and a half inch. If you're making a two inch diameter wooden screw with a four tooth per inch thread pattern, take the outer number here, one eighth, multiply that by two, get a quarter, and then subtract that from the outer diameter, which is two inches, to get an internal diameter of one and three quarters of an inch. To simplify the dimensioning of wooden screws, I will have a list at the end of the video of various screw diameters and the internal dimensions according to whatever tooth pattern you want to use. In the next video I will start work on the tap but to finish this video I'll show you what the tap and screw jig will be making looks like. These are for making two inch diameter screws and like I said earlier I'll be making one inch diameter screws. This uh, tap makes two teeth per inch threads. So you can see the dowel of the tap, which we'll be turning on the lathe, the hole, which we will be chiseling out. This hole houses the metal cutter that we'll be making out of the old file. We have the scrap metal, the sheet metal, which is inserted into the kerf here, which pulls the dowel through the hole. Here's the, here's the screw jig that makes the screws. The router is attached to the top of the jig. The router bit drops down through the hole here. On the front of the jig we have a two inch diameter hole and at the back we have a two inch diameter nut. So when we thread or when we put the dowel for the screw inside this hole it hits the router bit and as we turn the dowel the router bit cuts the threads for the screw catches the wooden nut in the back and pulls the dowel through cutting the threads that we want.